Are you ladies eating the pig feed? Huh? Are you eating out of their trough? Yes, you are. Look out, chickens. Why oh, you guys always put your face in it? Morning, Biscuit. Try to get to it. You can't get to the camera. I know. There's a fence in the way. <laughs> you can't get your nose through there. Just keep trying. <laughs> you can get through this fence just a little better, can't you? Yeah. Hey, duck ducks. Come on, duck ducks. Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today, I think it's gonna be a little bit of a catch up day. I got several small jobs that I need to do. Probably some jobs that I've put off for a little while that need done. And um, that's what we're gonna be doing. So let's see how many little jobs we can do today. So all that chicken we processed the other day, we need to shrink the bags. So we need uh, almost boiling hot water to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some heating up. Yeah, I wanted to get this loaded up because I'd take this back to my dad maybe later today or tomorrow. So while the water's heating up, we're gonna go out to the fence posts, the last ones that we drove. And sometimes when you hammer those into the ground, the top of the pipe mushrooms or gets wider at the top. So we're just gonna take a grinder, we're gonna round over the, the top of it, smooth everything out, and then kind of touch it up with some spray paint. A lot of times just with the post driver, like the first four inches of the pipe gets fairly scratched up, the paint does, so. Seems like they always need touched up afterwards. All right, I've got all the pipe posts rounded off and repainted on this whole fence run. I wanted to make sure the paint had at least a couple days to dry before I came back here and started building out these fence braces. So let's head back, we'll go check on the water. All right, we're boiling. We'll go ahead and just turn this off. So the shrink bags we got, the way you do it is you got this little straw that goes down inside and that lets the air out as it shrinks. And then you just put a zip tie around the top. And now it's ready to be dipped in the water and it'll shrink right up and look like a store-bought chicken. So I do use like a thick rubber glove so I don't get burnt. Just push it down in there and voila.
So then you just pull out the straw, tighten down the zip tie the rest of the way, put her in the freezer. So when I do this by myself, I typically get the other bags ready and just put a zip tie around it somewhat loose. That way I can just stick the straw in and, and dip the next bag. Really, this just allows me to be able to do it with those thick rubber gloves on. I can't do the zip ties with the rubber gloves on. Sometimes I help use tongs to help hold it under the water. The problem with turkeys are is if you let them go too big, they don't fit in this pot. I'm going to displace a lot of water. I think there's a hole in that glove. There we go, shrunk. Barely fit. Alright, next turkey. We got to wear the right shoes. I really can't hardly get submersed. So here's our biggest one. And, oh, he would be a tight fit. He might. 26 pound turkey, here it goes. Last year we did these in a trash can. Come on, all the way down. All, cover your legs. There you go. Barely. All right, I guess I'll just throw the turkey on top. But when you put these in here to freeze them, you want to make sure that they're somewhat loose. That way you can get them apart once this freezes. If you pack them in there, they'll be like, it'll be difficult to get everything back apart once it's frozen. And on this Whirlpool, it's a convertible fridge or freezer. So all we gotta do is come down here and then turn this from the refrigerator to freezer and it'll cool down and all that chicken should be frozen probably by tomorrow so while I'm thinking about it I'm gonna go ahead and check our propane tanks and just see how full they are we got them filled up last year they shouldn't be very low but double check and that's typical in this one to have a nest in fact, it actually has eggs in it. All right, I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see it. it looks like it's about 60%. Let's see if I can close this without breaking any eggs. So I can probably just give that probably just a couple more weeks. Those eggs will be hatched and I can tear that nest out of there. Now we'll look at this propane tank for the workshop. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but it looks like it's around 65%. So I usually fill up the propane tanks somewhere around, I don't know, August, September timeframe, toward the end of summer. Try to do it before the prices go up in winter time. So in the winter time, there's a higher demand. I'm pretty sure propane ends up going up uh, during those months. So I just, I try to get it uh, before that happens. And I had them filled up last year. These are both 500 gallon tanks. They will fill them to 80%, which is 400 gallons. That's the max that they will put in. So over here, over here at the house, we ended up using 20% since last year. And back here at the workshop, we've used 15%. So I can go at least three years without having to fill them up. 
but I typically try to at least fill them up every other year. Once they get down below 50%, I like to have them topped back off. But the good thing about that is if for some reason, like one year propane prices are extremely high, I can wait till the next year to try to buy it. So I've got a little bit of cushion in there built in on when I have to buy my propane. So the next thing on my list is to mow on this side of the driveway. This is where we cleared out this old fence line. You can see we've just got a bunch of weeds and the trees and everything trying to grow back in this area. And there's a bunch of tree stumps and stuff in here as well that you gotta watch out for. But there's still some poison ivy mixed up in here and Rebecca's highly allergic so she will not mow this area when she normally mows the yard. So I'm just gonna grab the 2515 and the brush hog and we're gonna see if we can get this all cleaned up. And I must have spilled some sorghum Sudan grass seed right here because I've got some growing right here beside the driveway. Get this out of the way. Well, just like most days, there's always something that goes wrong. Pretty sure that I broke shear bolt on the uh, brush hog here. So I ended up, well, I hit a stump, but there's other stuff under here as well. If this was a part of the stump, you can see, and that's a pretty good chunk of wood right there. And then here's a bunch more. I think this was piled up in here. So I don't think I actually hit this stuff with the brush hog. I think I just kind of pulled it out as I moved the tractor forward. I was on top of this little stump right here when it uh, messed up. All right, there's the shear bolt on the inside. Usually you can tell what grade of bolt it is by the how many like lines are on the head. This doesn't have any of the, of the lines on there to tell. Always use a grade two shear bolt. All right, so I gotta go find a grade two bolt. So here is the broken bolt in three pieces. I did find a replacement bolt in the bolt bin and a new lock nut. All right, she's all put back together. Let's go ahead, we've got a little bit more to go and we'll be done. Well, it's not perfect, like most things around here, but it looks better. And then I picked up all this uh, old tree stump or whatever that was. I picked that up, I'll go ahead and I'll just put that in the burn barrel. But I won't be able to burn it until the burn band's lifted because it's been so dry. So the next thing I want to try to fix is the post hole digger. I don't know if you guys remember, but the end of this ended up breaking off. And you can tell by the way it looks all 
grainy and look textured where it broke that it is cast. So this is some type of cast iron. I've never welded cast before, but we're gonna try. So I think the first thing I need to do is along where this is cracked, I, I do need to grind. So I need a little bit of a void for the weld to be able to fill inside of and connect these two to back together. So I'm just gonna take this to the grinder and take a grinder to this and I'm going to remove probably about half of the area that's broken. Now the trick is how am I gonna clamp this on here? I guess I can get a clamp probably just right across like that. So I got it clamped on here. It's not exactly perfect. I can feel a little bit of a ridge here on this back side on the inside where it's drilled out. I can always run a drill back through it afterwards. The rest of it feels pretty decent. So I think, I think I'm good welding it right there. So hopefully you can see that. We've created like a little notch in between the two broken pieces where we can fill that back up with weld. So to weld this cast iron together, I bought some nickel welding rod. I haven't ever used it before, so this will be the first time welding with that. So that's gonna be new. Uh, of course, welding cast iron's new. And I think the trick to it is it will crack um, when you weld it, that sudden heat will crack cast iron, at least that's the way I understand it. So you have to preheat this. So I'm going to use the acetylene torch and we're going to heat this up as hot as we can. I mean, we'll probably get this to where it's about glowing red and then we're going to weld it with the welding rod and then hopefully it doesn't crack and we'll get it all fixed like I hope to. But it's already broken, so worst case scenario, it's still broken when we're done, but we're gonna give it a shot. So here's the rod that I'm using. It is nickel 55, 330 seconds. It says it can run between 40 and 60 amps. So I think I'm just gonna go with like 50 amps to try it out. Brush your fingers. The top of it's welded. I've got a couple tacks on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over, probably preheat it again, and then tack, and then go ahead and weld the bottom out. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the amperage up a little bit. I'm gonna go to 60. Might got a little better penetration that time around. I think I'll flip it back over and then hit the other side one more time at the higher amperage. Well, there's my weld. It's still extremely hot. So we're just gonna wait and let this cool. All right, well, I guess it's time to go ahead and test it. Got a two pound hammer. All right, a little harder. Well, I didn't go crazy with it, but uh, seems to be fixed. Now I'm curious whether the hole needs to be reamed out or not. So three quarter inch bolt. Should be about the same size as a three quarter inch pin, so. I think it'll work. So I was just putting things away and I noticed the C-clamp that I used to hold it in place, I got it so hot that it actually started to melt the clamp. So if you look here at the clamp, you can tell where it started to melt. I knew I had it glowing red, 
but um, yeah, it started to melt away right there at that ball joint. So I'm gonna let this paint dry, and then tomorrow or the next day I'll go ahead, I'll put the post hole digger back together, um, and then I'm gonna end up using it. So I am gonna use this for putting in just a couple more fence posts. So right over here, we're gonna have a gate back here, and I've decided like every post that has a gate hanging from it, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it in concrete. That way the, the chances of that post staying plumb and, and not shifting with the weight of that heavy gate hanging on it, I think is just best. So we are gonna drill a few holes back here and set just a couple more. So I'll be able to test this weld out here pretty soon and then we'll really know whether I actually fixed it or not. So here in a couple days, I think I'm going to start back on the fencing project. Um, we've got three more runs of fence to be able to pull. Now one of those runs, like all the posts are in the ground, and we just got to build out a couple braces, and it's ready to pull fence. And then the other two runs, we've got to put all the posts in the ground still. So I need to get some more of these painted up. I've got eight laid out here. I'm going to get the final coat of black paint on there tonight, and then hopefully in a couple days, you know, or maybe later this weekend, I can go ahead and get some of these in the ground. But I think that's going to be it for today's video, guys. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.